Oh, hello once again. So in this video, we're going to cover a few things, uh, mainly dealing with on message and post message, send message, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this, uh, with controlling your computer. And uh, another cool thing I'll show at the end of the video is also how to send variables between two different scripts, which can be used in a lot of different ways. So yeah, let's take a look at this code, shall we? So the first one we're going to do here is uh, on message. <clears throat> so I just created a simple GUI here, um, which I can go ahead and launch. Where is that? There we go. So I got this little GUI here. And before the return under the GUI, I have on message 0x201 and a function. So basically what this is doing is whenever the system gets a message that has to do with this, and if you ever needed to figure out what these are, there's actually a list here. Let me, whoa, a little big there. This uh, I'll put in the description below along with the code. Um, and this is just a list of all the different kind of uh, codes and stuff that are associated with the messages. So there's a lot to go through here. So obviously I'm not going to cover everything here. Uh, there's a lot. But I will definitely include this in the description below for you guys. So this is basically a click. Um, whenever I left click in this GUI, it's then going to jump to down here. It's going to get the X and Y coordinates in that GUI for me. And if a GUI control, meaning I am in the GUI. And for the control, it's just kind of checking that everything's, you know, in the correct GUI and whatnot with all the coordinates and stuff. And then just uh, display that tooltip there, just saying you left clicked in GUI window, uh, the name at the coordinates that it grabbed up above with these lines here. So let's go ahead and try that out. So basically I can just click wherever. I'll click right here in this empty spot. And there's that tooltip. You left clicked in the GUI, number one at coordinates 177 x8 so yeah um you know this is really helpful for GUIs you know if you want to have a picture there and know exactly where they're clicking and say something like you know if they click within these coordinates perform a certain action I've done a video where I showed you how to make clickable pictures but maybe you don't want to have like a whole bunch of individual pictures you want one single picture and you know, they click on the picture of the person's head. They get a message box saying, you click the person's head. You click their leg. It says you click their leg. So, you know, it's got a lot of use in GUIs too, but it also has a lot of uses outside um, <clears throat> with just your system in general. So I'm not really going to actually run a lot of these uh, just because they do 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 stuff to my computer, which would mess up the recording of my video. But with a send message... That's basically doing the opposite of on message. On message is, it's it's looking for something to happen, where send messages or message, it's sending something to be performed. So it's like the opposite basically. And as you see, here's a basic copy and paste of all the different stuff you can do with it. There's a lot you can do with a send. Um, so I'm not really going to dive deep into all those. You know, if you have a specific window text you're looking for, you can, you know, manipulate them to how you want. But once again, that same uh, website I showed you with all the list of commands or codes, same thing's going to be used here. So first one I got here, uh, I press F2. Not sure why I got that there. Uh, it's going to sleep for a thousand or a thousand milliseconds, which is just equal to one second. That's just giving uh, the user a chance to release the key. That way, you're not having this like perform the action like really fast and spamming yourself. So it's going to send message uh, this code, uh, and it's basically sending it to the program manager. And what this is going to do is actually turn off your monitor. Uh, so I've added some notes here. Once again, I'll put all this in the description below. Uh, so for two, you know, you would replace it with uh, use negative one in place of two, and that turns your monitor on. So two is turning it off. Negative one would turn it on. 
uh, use one in place of two to activate the monitor, mo monitor's low power mode. So there's a few options you can do there just by changing this. Um, you know, if you want to add a timer and then have it every hour send message, uh, have that as a negative one just to make sure your monitor is never turning off for some reason. I mean, you can do these settings in your um, computer Windows settings, but just in case you want to have some control over it in some sort of way, this is definitely a cool thing to do. On the similar note there, you can use this right here. Once again, it's just sending Program Manager, but you're using a zero here, and that's just going to start your screensaver uh, by just sending a system command there, which is what these are. Uh, it's just a system command for Windows. Uh, change language. You know, maybe you are constantly jumping between two languages, your home language and another language that you're using. Uh, this could be a really cool way to quickly do that without having to constantly go in your settings and change them. Uh, I'm not really sure on what all the different language codes are, but you know, you can just play around with that and see what you uh, want to change. So there's that request being sent. And then I'm not sure what A switches to, uh, but you can look those up once again to find out what those codes are so you can figure out which two languages you want to switch between. So I could see this one being very helpful where you just have like, you know, one key switches it to English and then another key switches it to Russian. So you can easily just jump back and forth with your uh, keyboard there. So yeah, if you have any questions about this, I know I didn't dive too deep into uh, these. There's, I mean, hundreds of different things and codes that you can use here. So I just showed a few ones that I thought were kind of interesting and could be useful possibly. So definitely, you know, check out that uh, link below to see all the different things you can replace the send messages with to do. And uh, let me know what you guys end up doing it uh, with this stuff in the comments below. So on the next thing, and I think this is really where everybody's going to be uh, a lot more interested in. Uh, basically, I've seen this question asked a lot, and I actually really didn't ever like try this out until now. I never had much of a reason to, but this will let you send a variable from one script to another. Uh, the first thing that kind of pops into my head here on what this could be used for is maybe you want to have a script that will reload another script. So maybe you could have a timer on one script that's just constantly checking the keyboard, and if the keyboard has, you know, like a variable in there that says reload script, then reload script, and you can have that word reload being put into the keyboard by your other script. So it's a real cool way that you could you know, automatically remotely reload a script or just if you just need to transfer data for some reason between two scripts versus having to comp copy and paste it constantly between them. So the first thing we got here on this script is we just called it sender. And so up here we got the target script. Where are we sending this data? And we're sending that to receiver.ahk. And then it has, you know, the ahk underscore class auto hotkey. The only thing you're going to really need to change is this word receiver to whatever the name of the script is that you want to send your data to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to press F1. Let me edit that there. And what I got is a input box that comes up. And it just says, enter some text to send. Uh, it's going to, you know, save that as string to send. Uh, if error level, you know, do nothing. Basically, it means I push the cancel button. Decided I didn't want to do it. Uh, but if I don't and I push, you know, go ahead, it's going to do a lot here. There's a lot, as you see. So we'll kind of run through this real quickly. There shouldn't be too much you would ever need to change in this code anyway. Um, so, you know, if the result failed, you, you're going to get a message box just saying, uh, you know, just, you know, it failed. Does the following window title exist? And that's that target script name up there. Basically, if the script is not running, it's going to fail. Because obviously it can't find where to send it to. So make sure you have them both running. Uh, if it does fail, you could actually replace this message box 
with a run command to say, well, if it failed, go ahead and run receiver.ahk and then go ahead, maybe sleep a little bit, and then go ahead and continue. So you could change these message boxes to actually just go ahead and launch it for you versus you having to do it. I think I like that better, actually. Um, <clears throat> message box, uh, message sent, but the target window responded was zero, which may mean it ignored it. Basically, that probably means that the script exists, it found it, but it didn't receive your variable because maybe you just had some code over there wrong or incorrect or, you know, a few things, but it should work. So down here, you know, when the result, that's where this is going to jump down here. You know, there's that string to, uh, string to send, that variable we saved. So it saves, uh, you know, a little memory in this case by the referencing. So this is now going to variable set capacity. You don't really actually need this. Um, this is just kind of giving some structural memory area. I'm pretty sure you don't need this. Uh, I haven't tested that out without it, so I'm not really sure. But hey, you might as well just leave it in there, I guess. Why not? So a bunch of other stuff here going on. You know, this stuff is, you know, getting pretty complicated here. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is just there because it's required to kind of do that send and stuff. Uh, down here, you know, we got detect when uh, hidden windows on. That way, if you don't have like an active GUI in your code, it's just kind of running in the background and still going to find it. Set title match mode too, just to be on the safe side. You know, I always put those in all my scripts just to be on the safe side. Uh, we got timeout. You can adjust this if you want. Uh, you can delete it, but this is basically saying if, you know, all this stuff doesn't work within four seconds, just stop because something's obviously going wrong down here with this send message here. And that's where that variable right here is being stored. So you can change this, you can delete it, or you can just auto, honestly just get rid of these uh, parentheses here like this or percent signs and just put the number here instead if you want. I mean, that's going to save you one line of code, I guess. But this just makes it easier to find what you're looking for when you do want to change it. Uh, you know, detect hidden windows, previous detect hidden windows. You know, that's just restoring all the original settings for the call. Uh, set title match mode, same thing as above, just re kind of establishing, putting all your settings back to what they were originally um, in case your script needs them back to the original. And just a return. So this is some pretty complicated stuff. I kind of skimmed over a lot of this, but a lot of this stuff you shouldn't really have to mess around with too much. Uh, you know, and on this video, we're mostly focusing on like the send messages and stuff. So now we've sent our message. Hopefully it's gone through. How does it get received? So here is the receiving code, which is, as you can tell, a lot, uh, you know, a lot simpler on this side at least. So that's nice. Um, so right here, there's where that on message is, you know, looking for uh, this to happen, which is meaning that data had been copied. And, you know, once it realizes, like, hey, something in the system just copied data, go ahead and jump down here to this function. So, boom, we go down here. So, uh, string address, that's just uh, finding out where that information is going to be stored. Copy the data, you know, that we had made over on the other side. And then we're just going to show it in a tooltip. You know, this line can be replaced with a message box or if variable contains, you know, this word, do this. You know, kind of like that reload I was talking about. And this is just going to say, uh, you know, a script name received the following string. And there's that copy of data, which is where here's where we're getting that from that string address. Boom, get string git copy of data, and display. And it's just going to sleep for 5,000 uh, milliseconds and then delete that tooltip. And so for a tooltip, you just tooltip by itself, and that will uh, close out any that you have open. And then just a return. So let's actually see this one in action, because this is, this is a really cool script. You know, I've never used it before, but I've, like, kind of already am starting to try to come up with ideas of what I want to do with it and whatnot. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch both the sender and the receiver. So let's go ahead and launch that. Go ahead and launch that. And then I believe for the sender I have, yeah, F1 to activate. Okay. So F1. Here's that little GUI I had. So I'm going to type in, uh, you know, something. We'll just do, you know, a simple hello world. Why not? It's me, yeah boy. So, you know, if I had put cancel, that's where that air level comes and we've done nothing, but I'm going to push OK. And on the other side, the receiver is going to catch it, and there's that tooltip. Receiver.ahk has received the following string. Hello. Oh, why do we get an error there? And there it goes. Receiver.hk has received the following string. Hello, world. Send messages. Does the following window title exist? That's a little weird that it's doing that. That's the sender receiving, which looks like that was... For some reason, it... That's weird. I don't know. For some reason, it, it succeeded, but then failed afterwards. So... I mean, that should be solved just by deleting these two lines of code if you see that come up. And that should just solve your problem there. Yeah, just get rid of this fail line if it, you know, is causing you issues. It's kind of weird. But yeah. Um, you know, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I, I've never messed a whole lot with on messages and, you know, post and send and all that. So hopefully this is a good start for both me learning and, you know, you guys learning. If you want to see a second video based on this kind of stuff, let me know like what direction you want me to take. And I'll definitely look into that stuff a little bit more. You know, definitely hit that subscribe down so you can see when those videos come out. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See you later.